So in this nugget, we'll create our first application. We need an application created so we can load our scripts and actually execute them because without the application, we just have a script that does nothing that we can't even put in place. So I wanted to discuss the different pieces involved when creating our application. So let's jump into Contact Center Express and get started. So when it comes to creating our first application, we can write scripts all day, but if we don't have an application to actually specify for that individual script to run, then that script is pretty much useless to us. So in this nugget, we'll create this application here, but I wanted to give you a little bit of an overview of, the, of some of the components that are needed in order to create this application so it, it can indeed be called. For example, we have to specify a Contact Center Express trigger as CCX calls it, or if you're dealing with CUCM, they call it CTI route point. And when we configure that trigger, we have to specify a call control group. And that call control group has a group of CTI ports. So remember the CTI route point, its sole job is to deliver the signaling and the call setup to contact center express. That's a horrible S there, but there you go. But that is the job of the CTI route point or the trigger. Again, trigger and CTI route point mean the same thing. So once a trigger has been found, then it looks at its call control group, which contains CTI ports. And the ports are used to enter the call and to allow the media or the RTP stream to start. In the event that CTI ports weren't available, then the calling party would hear fast busy. So before creating our first script, we have to create this application. So therefore we can define the script to be used. Then we have to associate a trigger with that application and that trigger must reference a call control group, which has those CTI ports that we can use to answer the call. So let's go ahead and navigate to Contact Center Express and start this configuration. So let's log into Contact Center Express. Let me go back to administration here. Use CCS admin. All right, so once logged in, we'll go to applications, application management. Let me increase or zoom out here or zoom in. We'll go ahead and choose add new because we can see we have none defined. So for application type, We'll go with Cisco script application, hit next. So now we can name our application. So let's say I call it main. Then we can give this application an ID. And this is more for database purposes, but no two applications can have the same ID. So this has to be unique. I'll go ahead and give this the ID of 24. Next we can define the maximum number of sessions. So the number of calls or max number of calls that this application can handle. So let's say I did 10. So what I'm stating here is that this application can handle no more than 10 phone calls at one time. Now, if this is your main IVR and you're a larger corporation, obviously this number will be a lot larger. And please know that this number is completely independent of the CTI ports that you may have or number of CTI ports within your call control group. So this is the max number of calls that this application can handle. Then we have script. So here we have some built-in scripts that come with Contact Center Express. So for now, I'll just pick this aa.aef. Then we can see that this script comes with parameters. Again, no worries because we'll cover this as we create our script. And then we can give our description here. So I'll just do main IVR. And here we can enable this application or not. If we choose no, then at that point, the caller just hears a ring no answer. And we'll test that out later. And then we have default script. This is more of an error handler. So in the event that we run a problem with executing this script that we have here, so if any error should occur, then that call will automatically route to this default script. And this is the famous, I'm sorry, we're experiencing system errors. And this default script is used to simply terminate the call. So it's not a backup script to the primary script. It's just used to terminate that call gracefully. All right, with those options in place, I'll hit add. And now we've built our first application. So now we have our application. We have our script defined for that application. Let's build our CCS trigger. So we'll go back, we'll add a new trigger here. So we'll go ahead and choose the telephony trigger for now. We'll hit nets. And here we can specify a directory number to be used by the, this trigger or CTI route point. If I can focus here on a call control group, notice that we don't have one defined. So therefore I would not be able to save this configuration. So we have to build this call control group first. So we'll go to subsystems. We'll go to telephony. Then we'll go to call control group. And notice I have none defined. So I close some tabs here. Let me open up a new one. We'll go to our CUCM publisher node. So we go to device and phone and once that populates, I'll hit fine. And notice at this time, I only have three phones. Once we create our CTI ports, they will be shown here. So let me go to car routing route plan report. Let me find a range I'm not using here. So let me do one nine. Let's see what we got. So I'll start with 1900 and I will build all the way to 1919. So that's a total of 20 
CTI ports that I'll be using in my environment. So let's go back to Contact Center Express, add new. So for description, I'll use CCG for call control group. Number of ports I want, 20. These will be used in inbound direction. For prefits, I'll just stick with CCG. Starting directory number. So I'll start with 1900. Here's where we can specify settings for this call control group like device pool. So I'll just pick Tampa. Calling search space, where well, you use internal. Then for location, I'll choose Tampa also. And then the partition, I'll keep these in internal. If I show more, I have further options that I can choose. So for media resource group list, so I'll pick my Tampa media resource group list. For music on hold, I can specify it. So I'll just pick the default Cisco one. All right, so if I scroll down, I'll go ahead and hit add. But before doing so, notice if I go to device and phone, hit find, I only have a total of three. So let me go ahead and hit add now. And if we scroll up, we see the status is currently in progress. So we'll wait for this to finish. Now we have a call control group with 20 ports. So if I go back to CUCM and hit find, this three should change to 23. Let's go ahead and do that. And now I have the CTI port that we just created. And we notice for the registration, these are registered to the IP address of that contact center express node. So now that we have this created, we can go back to our applications to the one that we just created. Now I can add a new trigger. We'll do telephony. So now I can define the trigger or the directory number of this trigger or the CECM CTI route point. So I'll go ahead and start with 1940. Here we can set the language if we wanted to for our application. So this affects the folder of where the prompts is played from. So the default is English. So this is telling us that when we play our prompts, play it from the default location of the English folder. So this trigger is associated with this application, main IVR. So we'll pick main IVR for this device name. Description, I'll just keep the same. Here's where we can define a call control group. And now we have the value of CCG, which was not there before. So we'll choose that. I can do show more. Here we can enable or disable our trigger. We can define the maximum number of sessions, which is default. And notice that unchecked default value is the same as number of sessions set on the application. We also have idle timeout, which is five seconds or 5,000 milliseconds. We can set our device pool here. So Tampa device pool, location, I also pick Tampa. And again, these settings here are really specific to your environment. Partition for this trigger, we'll keep it under internal. We can set our voicemail profile, calling search base. We'll just put staff just for now. And here we have a call forward setting. Now, why would this be important? In the event that we cannot route to contact center express, it would be good to have a destination here of where this call should go to. If it's voicemail or maybe a different destination. So you, you definitely can set that here. So this allows us to have a final destination in the event that the application is not available for whatever reason. So before I hit add, let me go back to Contact Center Express. Let's go to Device, CTI Route Point. I hit Find. So I have a few here that were created previously, but we have a total of five. So if I go back to my trigger configuration and hit Add, we should see this be created here shortly. And now we have a trigger here of 1940. So if I go back to CUCM and do a find, we now have a total of six, with one being this main IVR that we just created. And the extension on this IVR is, or this application is 1940. And this is registered with the IP address of that Contact Center Express publisher node. Now we notice here that the application could have another trigger, so we can have multiple triggers. And why would you want to do that? One trigger may be an internal directory number. One could be a 800 phone number of some sort. One could be a local DID. With multiple triggers for reporting purposes, we can run a report against each trigger individually. So now we've built our first application. We have our trigger that has a call control group, and then we have a application that we created that we can use to define what script that we want to be executed. So in fact, I'll go off hook here on one of the phones and dial 1940. Welcome to the automated attendant. To enter the phone number of the person you're trying And that is the script that we have set under this application. So what we're hearing there is the application executing that script right there for the auto attendant. So now we have all the pieces in place to create our first script. And once we complete that script, we'll go ahead and set that right there. So therefore it can be executed when someone calls 1940. So in this nugget, we went through the steps of creating our first application, and we also verified that it does indeed work because we dialed 1940, which is the directory number of our trigger, 
or CTI route point, and we saw that script or we heard that script being executed successfully. I hope it's been informative for you. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in an IT career or looking to brush up your IT skills, check out cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.